Hi everyone, and welcome along to another Paramix Discovery Workshop. My name's Robert, the Paramix Support Manager based uh, in Sistra's Edinburgh office. Um, and where previous sessions uh, in this particular series have uh, shown off some of the fantastic new features that Paramix Discovery um, now offers us. Um, we thought we'd mix it up this week with um, a real life example. Um, so we're going to cover a case study in Douglas in the Isle of Man. So we hope you find it informative um, and useful. Uh, as ever, if you have any comments, please just uh, drop them below and uh, we'll certainly try and answer them either right away or we'll certainly get back to you. So without further ado, we'll just get uh, straight into it. So thank you again for joining us and, uh, and uh, I hope you enjoy the session. So this is the extent of the Douglas and Onkin network that was developed for the study. The model itself was developed a number of years ago and updated in 2016. Uh, in this particular case, the client was interested in a cumulative assessment, uh, looking at the impact of proposed development for the area following a consultation exercise that was undertaken on the island for the area plan for the east. So they were looking at the, the overall impact, if you like, of the on-the-road network. Looking in a bit more detail at the, the model itself, this is the town centre, uh, this is the port area, it's well served by public transport, shopping area, the promenade itself, um, running up and down for 1.6 miles, um, is particularly unique in that it has a horse-drawn tram on operation up and down the, the centre of the carriageway. So it was all fully modelled and, and incorporated within the Paramount's Discovery Network. This is the zoning system that was developed for the original model and updated in 2016. If I look in a little bit more detail and show you, the model itself was developed for three time periods, one for the AM, PM and Saturday, each of them using two matrix levels, one for the lights and one for the heavy vehicle types. It's been developed using 121 separate paramic zones and of course it's fully profiled in five minute intervals. Okay, using 32 separate profiles, which was collated and developed using the um, traffic survey data collected in 2016. You can see the AM period runs between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. The PM period itself runs between uh, 4 and 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. And of course, the Saturday period um, has been developed for 11 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon, as you can see there. Okay, so that's a little bit of background to the Paramics model itself and how it was developed. But in terms of this particular study and the information brought forward, let me discuss that next. Initially, the client provided information showing the location of each of the proposed development sites as part of the area plan for the east consultation exercise that was undertaken. Zoom in a little bit closer here to the Douglas and Onkin areas. You can see quite easily each of those particular sites that they were proposing to bring forward. Each given a unique ID. To back this information up, the client also provided uh, in the background each site ID for which there were some 120 plus separate development sites. Uh, development site type, employment, housing, etc the size, whether it be hectares or the number of units, and uh, other little bits and pieces of information useful to the, the planners uh, across on the island. This information was then taken and the TRIX database used uh, as part of a trip generation exercise that was undertaken for the study. Um, here we can see um, for each of the site IDs um, that each site was brought in, the ID, site type, the size of it, etc. And from there, tricks used and summarised to show the weekday trip rates and trip numbers for light vehicle types and also for heavy vehicle types. Again, we've done that for the AM and the PM period, as you can see here. Trip rates and trip numbers coming in and out of each particular site. And we also did the same for the Saturday period, again for both lights and heavy vehicle types. And we've done this for each and every site ID that was presented for us. A trip distribution exercise was then undertaken using the existing distribution within the model and 
uh, forward discussions with the client themselves. But in addition, and what impact did this have in terms of overall numbers? Well, we can see some matrix totals here. You can see there in the base model, um, typically we're modeling anywhere between um, 33 and 37,000 vehicles in a total period. Um, the development itself brought between three and four and a half thousand separate trips, depending on the period, um, taking our totals up in the PM there, um, as you can see, to over 41,000 vehicles. Some 11 to 12 percent increase in demand. But what kind of impact does upwards of 12 percent increase in traffic demand have on a network? And in this particular case, this network in Douglas and Nolkin. Uh, well, we went through a matrix development exercise to bring all the Trix numbers into the existing demand matrices, update the model. So again, we used the existing distributions uh, being developed for the original network in 2016 um, and looked at various land use types, etc. to help inform that process. Looking in the background of the model itself, once we did this, you can see that the Original demand matrices are still sitting there, but three new demand sets have been introduced, again, using two matrix levels. You can see our matrix totals now um, come to 141 separate parametric zones, so an additional 20 zones have been introduced into the network. And if we look at the, um, the AM development set itself, you can see uh, that many of the existing zones that were developed for the model are still being used for development zones but the development trips kept separate within their own demand set so they can be easily identified. Profiling, again, each and every zone either retained or was given a new um, profile, again, based on five minute intervals and again, based on existing information that had been developed for the original model. Of course, once the demands had been uh, developed, we need to assign them to the network. So, of course, we did this in the uh, Simulate tab. Um, uh, the model itself was developed in an older version of Paramix, so I've, I've quickly brought it through into a, a newer version of Paramix Discovery, where you'll be more familiar with this output. Uh, you can see each of the run configurations been set up here. Uh, retained the original AM, PM and Saturday periods, but also introduced new ones for the with development scenarios. Uh, my outputs, as ever, on the right-hand side, state the intervals, start and end times, etc. And of course it's just then a matter of running at each and every um, run configuration. So I've run a test one here just to give you an idea of the typical outputs that we presented to the client. Um, of course first and foremost uh, using the snapshot tool within Paramix Discovery uh, and using the congestion heat map we were able to um, quickly bring a series of movies together um, so, essentially running up each particular run, opening up, opening up each five minute snapshot and of course the congestion heat map areas are quickly and very powerfully show um, where congestion within the network is developing and building. So it's a great way to demonstrate the impact that these additional trips from the proposed development sites were potentially going to have. And again, we did that for the AM, PM and Saturday periods. But of course, we need to back up this information uh, numerically. Okay, and uh, to do so, we've of course got the Analyze tab within Paramix Discovery. So all the runs were brought in here. Um, initially, we used the Export Statistics function within Paramix Discovery, um, which uh, allows us to analyze each and every um, output um, collectively across all runs. Um, so it creates a, a set of databases for us. You can see all the table outputs. I was able to set my summary information in the periods that I was, I was interested in. And of course, it then just outputs that immediately at the bottom where we can export the information and use Microsoft Excel uh, to then uh, do our analysis. In terms of outputs for the client uh, themselves, um, here's an extract from the report that was developed. Um, you can see here, and initially they were they were interested in network-wide information, so they wanted to see the the, the impact uh, on a on a global scale, if you like. Um, so we presented um, the network summary statistics, so it's the overall performance of the network, 
um, average network speeds and average network travel times. And we did that for each of the three particular periods, the AM, the PM and the Saturday. So looking at the network summary statistics, um, here's an extract from the uh, Excel information that we brought together. Um, I used the TRIPS whole file, so uh, we understood each and every trip, the time it took, um, the distance it travelled, etc. So these are just outputs from the analysis that we we done in using Paramix Discovery. Um, you can see about the vehicle count, the time taken, and uh, the um, distance travelled by each and every vehicle in the periods I stated. And what this allowed us to do was to bring together some network statistics showing the total number of vehicles that had been modelled. You can see there for both the base and with the full development in place. The total distance travelled by all vehicles, the average time taken by all vehicles, and of course the, the average or mean speed by all vehicles in a network. So we were able to quite clearly compare base against um, with the full development scenario. We also had a little ranking system based on speed bins uh, brought together to help the, uh, the client understand the level of impact uh, that was going to be brought forward to their, um, to their network um, or predicted to be brought forward anyway. <clears throat> so you can see here, uh, in this particular case in the AM, uh, yeah, the speed is, is the average speed of all vehicles in the network is uh, reducing from 19.7 miles per hour to 12.63 should the full development contact come, come forward. Okay. Again, there was an impact in the PM, um, and not so much in the Saturday period as you would expect. Okay. So that was the network summary statistics that were presented and brought together using the TRIPSOL information in the background. Looking at network travel times, Again, we use the trips all information, and again we just use the pivot functions within Excel to analyse that for each and every period. It's assessed. And what this has allowed us to do is then summarise the information quite easily in five minute bins. Again, and then we're able to assess the average speeds of vehicles in the base against with full development scenario and then graphically output that. So you can quite easily see here in the AM, it's, uh, the base is in the blue, and the with development scenario in orange, so you can see the impact that is having on network speeds. There's more trips in the network, therefore the, the speed of vehicles in the network is reducing because congestion is increasing. But quite easily see on a network-wide basis, across the whole period, how that impacted. That's the PM, and if we look at the Saturday period, Again, some impact, but not as significant as both the AM and the PM periods, as you would expect. We also looked at um, network speeds and uh, travel times in the network. So again, similar exercise, five minute bins, but we looked at the, the time taken, essentially, of all trips um, to complete their journeys. And again, we compared base against the full development scenario. In this case here, you can see the base is in red and the full development scenario in green. So, of course, more trips in the network, therefore, things are slowing down. It's taking longer, therefore, we're seeing higher network travel times in the network as a result um, of the development and more trips being included within the network. So, as you would expect. Okay, so, in some cases, a significant increase too. But again, in the Saturday period and... In in, uh, in line with the, the previous uh, speed exercise that was undertaken, network speeds not as much of an impact during the Saturday period. So that's a um, summary of uh, network wide speeds and travel times, all using the trips all information extracted uh, from the analysis tool. And that's just another, again, quick summary of network summary stats, which is a great way of showing the performance of a particular network. Okay, and again, all using the Analyze tab within Paramix Discovery, which quickly assesses all runs and outputs the information that you require.
quite easily using the outputs that have been selected on the on the right hand side when you actually ran each of the networks. Okay. Parametrics discovery was also used in this particular case to assess um, air quality and the predicted impact it would have on, on air quality uh, using the emissions from each and every vehicle trip within the network. Um, for this purpose, uh, the model was run and uh, the outputs and the car positions file collected and uh, the program AIR uh, used to uh, assess this information. Um, what this output was uh, the total um, for each period, for each hour, uh, the total um, carbon output, uh, particular matter and of course your NOxes for each modelled period. Um, this allowed me to uh, present uh, graphically the impact and show the base against with development scenario and the likely and predicted air quality impact it is likely to have with these additional trips uh, or should they be brought forward into the network. So again, network wide impacts but uh, another way of of demonstrating um, should you be bringing all this information forward, the impact it's likely to have. The client also um, following the network wide analysis was interested in particular corridor information and wanted to drill further down uh, and understand the impacts on certain routes within the network. So these are the routes shown here. Um, what we did along each of these particular corridors was show the average speed of vehicles again in the base and with development scenario. We were able to show differences and percentage differences and uh, assign a level of service to that again to to, to graphically and, and numerically show the impact along each particular corridor uh, with all the development coming forward. Average journey times as well, we are analysed again around each of the corridors for each direction, for each period. So again, the difference in percentage difference um, impacts were able to be demonstrated and again we were able to do that both numerically and graphically very quickly just using the information output from the model. We also looked at uh, the bus services in particular and looked at the impact um, this type of development coming forward would have on public transport within the area. <coughs> so again we looked at the journey times and uh, for each period up and down all the, the um, public transport corridors and presented that also to the client. Lastly, um, queuing information at selected key junctions, quite a number, number of them admittedly, um, but the client gave us a list of particular junctions they were interested in. Um, these were analysed and each arm of each junction the queue lens output using the analyse tab within Panamix Discovery. This was popped into Excel Assess quite quickly and a series of graphs output um, allowing us just to introduce a little drop down box for each particular junction. So um, it's showing you the impact of the queuing across each model period, base and um, with development scenarios. So there we are just showing you each of the each of the junctions that you're interested in, just select them from the drop down box and the information is updated and presented. So there we are, a real life example uh, of Pramix in use and how it can be applied in this particular case to uh, the planning system. Uh, I hope you found uh, this particular case study useful and informative. Um, I'd just like again to, to thank you for your time today and for joining us. Um, again, please, if you have any comments, just uh, drop them down below. Um, we'll be happy to get back in touch. Um, but otherwise, we will look forward to seeing you next week. Um, so thank you very much again and uh, 